Recently, I've been struggling with focus and not being on for what I'm doing usually during a day for work or anything really. And it's been so frustrating. And I've noticed that it happens periodically or cyclically. And so I was sharing with my husband this morning how I just got so overwhelmed and so frustrated and to the point of tears and emotional. And you probably feel like that too. Once in a while, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, we all have those times. And um, so what I've noticed is that that's, that happens around the time when I'm either close to my period or around my period time. And the Jesse looked at me and said, hey, I think we need to change some things in your office. And just recently, I bought a new desk that goes, you know, up and down. I was excited. And I have two big desks in my office. Things are started piling up on my, in, you know, on the desks. And I don't like that. I like simple, clean, organized environment where I don't see too many things if I'm working I see things that are inspiring to me and that gives me creativity so with all of the overwhelm I was just frustrated I couldn't focus on things and even the things that I needed to do would be disappearing from my awareness because I was just too overwhelmed and, you know, I'm the person who likes to create to-do lists and I create a long list and I overwhelm myself with that as well. So, Jesse said, we're going to move things out of your office, choose which desk you want to keep right now, and then the rest has to go, right? That's right. And then what happened after that? What did I start doing? Well, in addition to that, we also threw away a bunch of old journals and paper that we're never going to read it again anyhow. Exactly. It's just cluttering up closets, so we throw that away. And so it's interesting how we accumulate things, papers, mail, journals, and things just pile up, pile up, pile up, and we don't throw it away, so we get overwhelmed with that, like with anything in our life, Right. And a while back, Jesse and I made this rule, which we need to stick to it, is that when we bring something in, one thing has to go, right? One thing in, one thing out. Sometimes we don't do that. That's, That's a, when we get another it. version of replacement theology. <laughs> right. You know, or lately we wanted to get to the minimalist point where we only have what we need and no more than that. We're still working on that as because, well. Isn't it true that every they say everything gives off uh, has a frequency or energy, yeah. or it influences your environment, right, to some degree? Yeah. And so, for instance, you know, sometimes I have things on my desk because I don't know where else to put it, and it just sits there and it takes my energy, takes my attention, and constantly pulls my attention towards that thing. Then I find a place to, where to pile things up and maybe open the drawer, pull things in and close the drawer. So supposedly I don't see it, but it's there. So here's what we did. We moved things around, we shift the atmosphere, we decluttered a lot of things and we recycled, threw away and or giving away whatever you wanted to sell. But that is actually what moves us towards action, towards peace, towards, you know, um, efficiency. Yes. And shalom in general. And shalom. Yes. The peace. general feeling of shalom and peace. Yeah. Because I was in tears, you guys. I was emotional and I just couldn't shake it. And it would happen when I'm in my office, which I usually love my office and Jesse would tell you that this is one of the peaceful places mm -hmm. to be, right? And so that's kind of wanted to share with you. If you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like you can't move forward, you're frustrated, 
things you're just pulling on you atten your attention is going different directions you're getting distracted start looking at your environment what it looks like do you need to move things around do you need to throw things away give away get rid of or organize store maybe put in the files or whatever that is right and then you know we talked about then how to actually shift towards being productive from there mm -hmm. So there's a couple of nuggets that I'll share that I personally have learned from experts that are smarter about this topic than myself. And that is perfectionism is often just another term for procrastination. Mm -hmm. And if you wait until the perfect moment or the perfect opportunity, the perfect situation mm -hmm. in order to get something done, it, it's actually subconsciously giving you a reason to not do it mm -hmm. because it's not does it's like not everything's you know perfect the stars aren't perfectly aligning or yeah. it's not whatever we don't believe in the stars having any influence on that I just use that as a terminology but um then additionally is the thing of not using to-do lists now should you make lists yes but it's what you do with them afterwards that's important mm -hmm. the list is simply to get it out of your head mm -hmm. so that your hit your list is doing the remembering for you mm -hmm. however if your list does not translate over to your calendar mm -hmm. it's not beneficial and just ultimately you probably won't get it done yeah and so what, what you need to do is get that list over onto the calendar and block it out how much time you're going to spend on this task let's say you dedicate one hour to this task mm -hmm. And then you do that task in that hour, distraction-free, zoned in. Once that hour's up, even if you're not finished, next thing, move on. Mm -hmm. You just leave that, you just move the remaining amount of time you think you need to finish that task to another spot on your calendar. Mm -hmm. And what that does is subconsciously tricks your brain into feeling accomplished. Yeah. You did what you set out to do in that hour, that blocked out time. And if you just go until you're finished, that's where the feeling of overwhelm and you're taking longer than you actually would normally. Mm -hmm. so if you don't have an end time for your task, it tends to take you longer. People that only do what they planned and set out to do in that block of time on the calendar, and then they move on to the next thing, regardless if they finished it they still have that feeling of accomplishment and achievement and they're not lying to themselves. They're not feeling like a loser for not finishing their long list, mm -hmm. which most lists are impossible to complete anyhow because yeah. there's no there's no structure, there's no game plan, no end point. It's just like this big overwhelming list. I'm gonna try to finish it all today. And well, you know, if, you, if you, the list has no parameters, no borders, no boundaries, mm -hmm. and so things flow into each other and Next thing you know, you know, you get distracted. Oh, yeah, I got to do this. Oh, by the way, yeah, just not noticing I did that. And the next thing you're completely off track. Mm -hmm. That's how lists work. Where if it's on the calendar, I'm just doing this and this amount of time, you're going to yeah. complete it. So yeah. that's lists versus time blocking. Yeah. And I was going to also mention that, you know, the other thing you can do is that find when you have the most focused time so you can be efficient. Test yourself. Like if you are working from home, do you work better in the morning? Do you focus more in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening? You know, and time yourself and see how long you can go undistracted, focused on one task. And then when you, as soon as you start getting distracted, you stop it and see and watch it. And then you will be able to determine when it's the best time to do certain tasks or work. Another health tip I can give on the use of caffeine is don't front and front and don't load the front end of your day with caffeine. Mm. And then you have expended all your brain power to where you're completely shot in the afternoon. Mm. So it's best to not, cons not uh, consume caffeine until you actually need it. Mm -hmm. and rather than just out of habit and when you do that you spread your brain power you use more of your natural brain energy and brain power 
and then you use the caffeine to boost that when you actually need it. And of course, there's lots of dynamics about, you know, if you're addicted to it and then you don't have it, your brain is like fried because your brain is depending on that dopamine and adrenaline boost. Mm-hmm. And so I, re- I, I, I keep myself to like one coffee in the morning and then, a, you know, something else in the afternoon. It's very tempting sometimes to double, you know, double shot first thing in the morning. But then when I do that, the afternoon, I'm fried. Mm-hmm. to work off you can't do it doesn't even touch it anymore so yeah. just a little tidbit for you there so here are the answers for you how to shift from frustration distraction not being able to focus getting into overwhelmed and overloaded yeah. and being grateful can help you shift out of those negative cycles too that's just true yeah. gratitude and make a list of what you're grateful for go on a list and make a gratitude list and that'll snap a little you know and then declare it and shout it or share it with somebody reach out and encourage somebody and express gratitude to them and get out of your own head and get out of your own box and and uh, bless other people and you'll be blessed so what i was saying started to say is that how to get out of this and then get into productivity focus and um efficient mode so very good very yeah. well said All right, guys, that's it. Go and be efficient. Be efficient. Jesse and Irina Kaufman here. And uh, we love and appreciate you. Give us feedback. What do you think? Have you done this before? Maybe you have some ideas for us. Post in the comments. Yeah. All right. See you later.